Hi everyone and welcome to Chromebooks 101. In this video we're going to start with a quick look at what Chromebooks actually are. Then we'll go into why we use Chromebooks for education, what makes them a valuable tool for teaching and learning. Then I'll show you guys a few keyboard and trackpad tips because the trackpad is a little bit different uh, than other types of computers so we'll take a look at how to use those. And then the general interface, so how to access the shelf, how to pin apps to the shelf, how to add apps from the web store, so the basics along those lines. And then the settings, how do you adjust settings on your Chromebook from the status area. And then another thing that comes up a lot is how do you take a screenshot on a Chromebook. So I'll show you guys two different ways that you can take a screenshot. And then finally, how do you project from a Chromebook, particularly if you still have a VGA connection to your projector. So let's begin with a quick look at what Chromebooks are. First, a Chromebook is a device that runs on the Chrome operating system or Chrome OS, which is a little bit different because most of the devices you may have been familiar with either run Windows 10 or Mac OS X. This runs Chrome OS. And because of this, Chromebooks are optimized to run applications and to have uh, users share their documents and resources in the cloud or online. And because of this, which we'll get to in a second with the benefits of it, is it makes them uh, much faster and it makes what you're doing on it uh, easier to use on other devices that you may be using because everything is saved in the cloud. But there are a lot of benefits to having a Chromebook in an educational setting. The first is that it has seamless integration with the Google Apps Suite. So since our district and many districts around the country are moving towards G Suite for education, it just makes sense to have everything integrate for the kids. It will save everyone time um, and make the workflow a lot more smooth. The other thing is speed. I mean, we waste a lot of time uh, in education with having technology boot up and start and a lot of those issues go away with Chromebooks because they start so quickly and usually it's under 10 seconds from the time they open the Chromebook to the time that they can actually get in there and start learning with it. Uh, the battery life is great too because typically it's going to last an entire day so as long as they come in charged or they're charging the card overnight then they won't even need to be plugged in throughout the day. Uh, virus protection and security is very helpful because um, uh, that's just another layer of security for our students and for the devices that we give them. And then the other nice thing about Chromebooks is they automatically update and refresh all the time, so they always have the most up-to-date software on the device. Now in the Chromebook, you'll notice that the top row of the keyboard uh, is a little bit different. Uh, so it's actually built more for navigation in Chrome. So you see that the first two buttons after the escape key are just the left and right arrow. Those are to go back and forth in your browsing history if you wanted to quickly go back and forth through Chrome. Uh, then it's the reload refresh button of the page that you're on. The next button is the full screen mode. So whatever you're accessing, if you want to pop it into full screen or minimize it, you'd press that button. The next button is, uh, a lot of people don't know what to call it. I just call it the switcher. just makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to remember. But that switches between your windows. And it's also going to come in handy later on when we talk about how to take a screenshot because that's the key that will be part of that shortcut. Then the others are just the basics on brightness and volume. And then all the way to the right is the power on and off key. Now the other main difference with the keyboard is that there's no more caps lock. Okay, so what they did is they got rid of the caps lock key and replaced it with a search key. So when you click that key or, or tap it at any time, it's going to open up the search window and it has an access to your apps list. Now if you still want to turn caps lock on, you can. So it's just pressing alt and then that search key that will toggle cap locks on and off and a notification will pop up on the bottom right in your status area saying whether or not caps lock is on or not. The trackpad also is a little different from another computer. It actually has a lot more built-in features that I find actually very helpful uh, for students and teachers just as far as an efficiency and productivity standpoint. So the first thing is that Moving the pointer is the same on another trackpad. You just uh, put your finger down and move it across the trackpad. But to click, you don't even have to press it down. All you have to do is tap the trackpad, and that will count as a click. Okay, so again, you don't have to do these hard presses on a Chromebook. Just tap it. That will count. Now, the first thing people typically ask me is, how do you right-click on a Chromebook? Well, to do that, you press or tap with two fingers at the same time. Now, it's not a double tap, because when you say double tap to people, they use one finger and they tap twice really fast. You don't have to do that. You just tap once with two fingers at the same time, and that will count as a right click. Uh, if that gives you any trouble, then the other way to do it is you press the Alt key down, and then you can click with one finger, and that will also be a right click. Now, to scroll easily with the trackpad, once you're on a website or a document, swipe with two fingers up or down, and that will scroll. So that way you don't have to find the scroll bar on the right. Two fingers swipe up, two fingers swipe down will be the scroll. Now, if you want to move back and forth quickly between pages you were just on, 
it's a swipe left or swipe right with two fingers and that would just be like the back and forth button uh, that you would go in your navigation history. Now a feature that I found very helpful if you have multiple windows or applications running is to swipe up with three fingers because when you swipe up it will bring a a dashboard of all the things you have open so that you can navigate quickly back and forth and then to close them you just swipe down with three fingers. Now if you have multiple tabs open in Chrome, which a lot of us do, a lot of times more tabs than we actually need, but if you want to quickly go back and forth between them, you can swipe left and right with three fingers. Okay, so once you uh, tap or, or hold three fingers down, then you'll see there'll be a, a highlight along the tab that you're currently on. So as you move left and right, you'll be able to quickly navigate between all of your tabs. And then finally, drag and drop is you click with one finger, hold the item you want to move, and then while holding, you'll move the item and release it to drop it. Okay, so that's a pretty basic drag and drop feature. Now that row along the bottom of your Chromebook is called the shelf. And by default, it's going to have a few basic apps that are installed on there, uh, Chrome browser being one of them. And the bottom right of that shelf is the status area. So that's where you're going to have the, the settings and some of the basic uh, updates that will come with your Chromebook. But this is think of this as a, a bookmarked area for you to get to the apps that you use most in a, in a minute or so. I'll show you guys how you can actually pin certain applications to the shelf to make it easier to navigate your Chromebook. So to access all of the apps that you're using, you're actually going to click the button to the bottom left. Uh, I call it the apps list or the search button. And once you click that, a window will pop up and it'll have the Google search uh, uh, bar but it will also have some of the, the apps that it thinks that you use the most. Uh, if the uh, apps that you have aren't listed there, you actually have to click on the All Apps button, okay? Uh, once you click the All Apps button, it'll bring up a menu of all the apps that you have installed in Chrome. Now, if you have more than fill the whole menu, there'll be a little slider at the bottom with a few different bars. If you swipe with two fingers across or just click on one of the bars at the bottom, then you'll be able to see all of the other apps that you have installed on your Chromebook. If there are other apps that you'd like to install on your Chromebook, then what you'll have to do is go to the web store. So when you open the web store, you'll be able to search for apps, extensions, add-ons, all the things that you could run in your Chrome browser. Now, if you want to take any of these apps and pin them to your shelf just for quicker access, you can see in the shelf that I have, um, there are a few that I put there because I use them a lot. Then you would uh, right click, so a two finger tap on any of the apps, then you'll see a, uh, a few options pop up. You can pin something to the shelf, you can open it, or if you want to get rid of that application, you can remove it from Chrome. Now to the lower right, you're going to see your status area. And that's where you can access a few different things. Uh, first is that once you click on it and open it up, you'll see that there's the sign out option if you want to sign out of your Chromebook. This is if, especially if you're in a, a shared setting. Uh, there's the Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth settings, the volume, uh, if you want to go into the full settings gear, which we'll explore in a, a future video, uh, but this has a lot of advanced settings and accessibility features that you can enable on your Chromebook, and that's the gear icon. You'll have your battery left, so as you can see I have over 9 hours of battery remaining on my Chromebook right now. Uh, updates if they do need it, so as I can see here I need to restart to update to the latest version of Chrome. There's a help menu, so clicking that question mark will bring you to a lot more help uh, resources to help you navigate the Chromebook. And then, of course, the shutdown and lock button uh, to the bottom right. Now, to take a screenshot, or in other words, take a, a picture of anything that's on your screen and turn it into an image, to get the full screenshot, that's option one, you press control and then that switcher key on that top row. But if it's a situation where you only want part of your screen, so say you just want to select a certain top right quadrant of uh, what's visible on your screen, you would hit control, shift, and then the switcher key. Okay, once you click that, you'll see a little plus sign pop up and the whole screen gets a little bit darker. Once you click and drag, whatever is in that highlighted area is going to become your screenshot. Okay, so this is really valuable, especially when you want to get just a small part of the screen and not the entire thing. And then you don't have to crop it later on, it's already cropped. So after you take a full screenshot or a partial screenshot, you're going to see a notification appear in the bottom right. Once that pops up, if you click on that button, it will bring it to the folder that it's in. Uh, but typically it's always going to be in your downloads folder. So just go to your files app and once you see that, you'll see the Google Drive up top, have all of your stuff that's in Drive, but then there will be a downloads folder. All the screenshots will be in there. So anything that you want to keep, I highly suggest taking it, dragging it into your Drive, perhaps making a folder for your screenshots in your Drive just to keep things organized. And once it's there, you can access it on any device.
So last thing is how to project with a Chromebook. So a lot of classrooms are still equipped with VGA connections to their uh, projector. So if you still have one of those projection screens, then what you need to do is get an HDMI to VGA projector. And in our district, every teacher received one with their Chromebook. So you would take the uh, VGA connection that's coming out of the projector, connect it into the adapter, and then the HDMI part goes into the Chromebook. And if you want a more detailed explanation of how to do that, uh, go to that bit.ly link up top, and that's a video of uh, more specifically how to project with a Chromebook.